Okay, uh, next, uh, let's have a look at some matrices questions. Uh, these are useful for additional uh, maths. The, these are all taken from the IGCSE Cambridge uh, syllabus. Um, okay, so uh, just a quick recap of the sorts of things you're going to have to be able to know how to do. You need to find the inverse of a matrix, uh, a 2 by 2 matrix, which we basically just use this formula for. Uh, you've got to be able to multiply two matrices together. This is an example of how to do a 2 by 2 matrix. Um, Again, we kind of follow this formula here. And you've got to solve equations using matrices. Um, so, for example, you've got to be able to write these equations in this form and then use the inverse matrix to, to solve them. So those are the sorts of questions we'll have a look at. Okay, so here's the first question. Um, gives us matrix uh, X, Y, and Z. This is matrix X, this is matrix Y, this is matrix Z. And it says which of the matrix products are possible, um, but we don't have to actually evaluate them to say which one would be possible to do. Um, first things first, let's actually write down what is X. X is um, three rows and two columns, so it's a three by two matrix. Y is uh, one row and three columns, so it's a one by three matrix. And Z uh, has got two rows and two columns, therefore it's a two by two matrix. In order to multiply two matrices together, the the middle number has to be the same. So for example, we can do this is X, which is a 3 by 2 matrix, and Z is a 2 by 2 matrix. We can multiply them together because the middle number, in this case here is 2, is the same. Um, so we can multiply them together. We will get a 3 by 2 matrix as a result. The other one that we can do um, is this one, X times uh, Y, because we've got a 1 by 3 matrix. Uh, so I've written that the wrong way around. Yeah, that's, uh, sorry, it should be y times x on this one. Um, because as you can see, you've got a 1 by 3 matrix, which is y. So this is y. And therefore, we can times that. And a 3 by 2 matrix, which is x. So we can times those two together. And we're going to get a 1 by 2 matrix as our answer. It's worth noting that... Um, just because we can do y times x, we can't necessarily do x times y. In this case, we can't. If we try to do x times y, the middle numbers would be uh, 2 and 1. They wouldn't be the same. Okay, so there we go. So we can do x times z and y times x. Okay, um, next one. Uh, they give us matrix A, B, and A, C equals B. Step number one, they say find the inverse matrix. Well, matrix A is 2, minus 1, 4, and 7. Find the inverse matrix. We just use our little formula. So the inverse matrix is 1 over AD minus BC, DA minus CB. So we, we just rearrange the original matrix. So following my formula, I get 1 over uh, 2 times 7, take away 4 times negative 1. That's the bit on the fraction. And then I've, I've basically swapped 2 and 7, and I make these two negative. So negative 1 becomes 1, 4 becomes negative 4. And therefore, the inverse matrix becomes 1 over 18, 7, 1, minus 4, and 2. So that's the inverse matrix. Um, and then it says, hence find C. Well, um, what they've just told us before, they told us that AC is equal to B. So I'll write that out, AC is equal to B. I'm going to use this fact here, that if I multiply the inverse... And it needs to be needs to be on this on the left-hand side so that they're next to each other. So if I multiply the inverse of A on the left hand side and I'll also do the same thing on, on the right hand side but make sure it's in front of the B um, then I'll get this basically the, the inverse matrix and the and the regular matrix basically cancel out because they're inverse functions or inverse matrices so therefore we just get C on the left hand side and therefore we get A minus 1 the inverse matrix of A times by B okay so seeing as we've already worked out the inverse matrix for A we just basically do that matrix times by B and that's going to give us the answer to C. So there we go. This was the inverse matrix for A. This was the matrix for B that they gave us before. Here we go. So therefore, we need to now multiply these together. Now, multiplying a 2 by 2 matrix, we're going to do row 1 times column 1. So we're going to do 7 times minus 4 plus 1 times 10. That gives us the first term. And then row 1 times column 2, 7 times 2 plus 1 times 4. It's going to give us 
second term, and then minus 4 times minus 4, 2 times 10 gives us the third one, and so on. And I, I do that first, and then obviously I've got a uh, times by 1 over 18. If I do all of that, I then I simplify it out to minus 1, 1, 2, and 0. Okay, so we're just using, again, if you're not sure on how to do the 2 by 2 matrix, we're using this formula here. Okay, so kind of just recap on that. Okay, so there we go. So let's see, it equals minus 1, 1, 2, and 0. Okay, uh, next question. Um, we're given uh, what matrix A and B are. Find matrix P and Q such that, etc., etc. P equals B squared minus 2A. Okay, so uh, on this one, let's just write out what we've got. B squared, remember B squared is B times B. Okay, we can't just um, square the numbers. We've got to actually times the two matrices together. 2 times matrix A, so that gives us this one. Uh, I've then got to basically uh, use my matrix multiplication. So I'm going to do row 1 times column 1 gives me this term. Row 1 times column 2 gives me this one. Uh, row 2, column 1 gives me this one. Row 2, column 2 gives me this one. That's the first bit. And then 2 times minus 2 is that. 2 times minus 1 is that. So I, I basically end up with P being this thing here. And then once I've got it like that, I've got minus 4. I could basically just uh, take away each of the terms. So minus 4, minus, minus 4 gives me 0. Minus 3, minus, minus 2 gives me minus 1. 12 minus 12 is 0. 5 minus 4 is 1. So there it goes. That's uh, vector P. Oh, sorry, matrix P. Um, next one I'm going to do is Q equals B of the A uh, inverse. Okay, so let's just write down what we've got. This is vector, so this is matrix B. This is uh, basically on the inverse of uh, matrix A. So it's, first off, let's actually find out what the inverse of matrix A is. Again, I'm going to use this formula. Um, stick in the numbers. I've got AD minus BC, so that times that, take away that times that. That gives me this fraction bit. And then again, I swap those two terms around. So I get 2 and minus 2. And I make these two terms negative. So I end up with negative 6 and 1. Okay, so if I simplify that, I'm going to get A. The inverse A is a half of 2, 1, 6, and minus 2. I can actually multiply the half in here. Sometimes it's easier to leave it outside, but I'll, I'll put it in there. So I get 1 and a half minus 3 and minus 1. Okay, and then I've got that. Um, therefore, I've got this is matrix B, 0, minus 1, 4, 3. This is the inverse matrix of A. So therefore, again, do 2 by 2 matrix. Row 1 times column 1 gives us the first term. Row uh, 1 times column 2, etc., etc. And I get 3, 1, minus 5, minus 1. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, right, the next one. Uh, we've got, this is a bit tricky. Um, they've basically given us some information, but in, in the table form, um, five teams in a football league, like the, the parrots, the quails, the robins, the swans, uh, swallows, and the terns. Uh, basically, how many matches they've won, how many matches they've drawn, how many matches they've lost. They get three points for a win, one point for a draw, zero for a loss. And we want to basically have a matrix that, produces the total points for each team. Okay, right, so it's a bit tricky. This is probably the easiest way to think about it. Think about this, so the, the parrots, basically, we don't care about the games they've lost, they're not going to give us any points. We don't care about how many games they've played. Basically, we want to care about how many games they've won and how many games they've drawn, because these are the ones that are actually going to give us some points. So here we go, the parrots have won five, drawn three, the quails uh, one, four, drawn one, etc., etc., etc. So this is the matrix that shows that information, and this is the matrix that shows the information of three points for a win, one point for a, a draw. And see how this is going to work. Basically, if I multiply these two together, I'm going to do row one times column one. So I'm going to do five times three exactly. So five times a one. That's going to give me five times three, which is what I want, which is 15 points. And then it's also going to give me three times one, which again, which is what I want. Three times a drew. So they're going to get three lots of one point. So I'm going to do five times three plus three times one. That's going to give me 18. So basically the parrots have got 18 points in total. Then I do the second one. I've got four. So this is row two times column one. So four times three plus one times one. So that means four, four games they've got three points. One game they've got one point. It gives me a total of 13. So again, that matches up 
the number of points that they're going to get. So there we go. So the, these are the, the points totals that each of those teams would have got. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, similar to the last one, really. They just introduced this idea of I, which is the uh, identity matrix. So I'd rewrite it like this. So this is A squared, which is A times by A. M lots of A, which is this one. And then N lots of, well, I is 1, 0, 0, 1. So that's the identity matrix. Um, okay, now I've got that. Let's actually times all of this thing by M. So I've got m times 2, m times minus 1, m times 3, m times 1, that gives me this matrix, and n times 1, n times 1, that gives me this matrix here. And again, I've, I've done the 2 by 2 multiplication, and I'm going to get uh, 1 minus 3, 9 minus 2. So we get all of this. Well, now I can actually add these two matrices together, and I can just add the equivalent parts of the matrix. So I'm going to do 1 plus 2m, gives me this, minus 3, then minus m gives me this, 9 plus 3m gives me this, minus 2 plus m gives me this. Okay, so this is the matrix on the left, and this is the matrix on the right. Okay, now I need to just equate uh, the, the, the terms. In this case here, I've got a minus 3 minus m. This term here must be the same as this term, which is 0. That tells me that m is minus 3. And then let's equate another one. I know that 2m plus 1 must be equal to n, but if m is minus 3, then therefore n is minus 5. Okay, and then lastly, let's just have a look at a question on solving simultaneous equations. First off, let's find the inverse matrix. Okay, hopefully we're okay with these by now. We're using the formula. There we go. We stick basically those numbers into the formula, swap those around, make those two negative, do 1 over, in this case here, 4 times 5 minus 2 times minus 3, gives us 1 over 26, 5, 3 minus 2, 4. So that's the inverse matrix. Then how are we going to use this uh, to solve these simultaneous equations? Um, well, step number one is to actually rewrite these uh, simultaneous equations like this. So see if you can see why this works. We've got 4 times x. So row 1, column 1, so that would be 4 times x plus minus 3 times y is equal to this thing here, which is minus 10. So there we go, that, that gives us the equivalent. This is 2 times x plus 5 times y is equal to 21. So again, it, it's the same thing. It's just been rewritten in a matrix form. Uh, now I've got it written like this. If I do the inverse of a on both sides, to the left and to the left, this bit is going to cancel out. So I've basically... There's the inverse matrix A on the left. Here's the inverse matrix A on the right. And then these cancel out because it's the inverse and the normal matrix together. So they just disappear. So all that's left on the, on the left-hand side is X, Y. And then what's left on the right-hand side is the inverse matrix of A times by minus 10, 21. Okay, so all I need to do now is, again, do some matrix uh, multiplication. So I've got... Uh, row 1 times column 1, which gives me this one, and row 2 times column 1, which gives me this one, and it's going to give me, if I work this out, 13 and 104, and I've still got the 1 over 26, so multiply them together, 1 over 26 times 13 is a half, 1 over 26 times 104 is 4, and remember what does that mean, the x is 0 0.5, and then the y is 4. Okay, and then let's do one last one of those, check we're okay with them. Uh, exactly the same sort of idea, really. Um, step number one, I'm going to rewrite this. So I'm going to put the 4 and the 13 over here, and then I'm going to rewrite it like that. So 2x plus 3y is equal to minus 4, which is this one, and minus 5x plus 4y is equal to minus 13, which is this one. So it's going to be exactly the same as the last one. Find the inverse matrix of A. Uh, again, just using my formula, I get 1 over 23, 4 minus 3, 5, 2. And therefore, uh, I'm going to get in this time x, y. So basically, I times the inverse matrix on this side, times the inverse matrix on this side. I'm going to get 1 over 23. This is the inverse matrix here, times by minus 4, 13, minus 13. Again, do some matrix multiplication. Row 1 times column 1 gives me 23, row 2 times column 2 gives me minus 46, 
1 over 23 times by this, which gives me x is 1 and y is negative 2. So there we go. If I put those two numbers back into these equations, they would satisfy uh, both equations. Okay, so there we go. A few questions on matrices.